Tai Chi women, where are you? <laughs> How many of you do Tai Chi or has learned Tai Chi? Raise your hand. Oh, not all of you. <laughs> tai Chi has been around for 1,500 years, if you want to, to go for the documented one. The undocumented one, meaning oral history, it's over 2,000 years old. So 2,000 years it's been here. So I'm gonna ask you, what took you so long? <laughs> so what, what took you so long? How come you're not taking Tai Chi? You can tell me. I won't have a kung fu kick at you. <laughs> Okay. Well, you name it, I heard it. The most popular one you hear is, it's for old people. <laughs> and the other reason is, it's so slow. And then I hear this, it's just for Asians. Ladies, if you have a blood circulation digestive system, I don't care what race you are, you belong in that group. So I also today want to share with you, there's actually a reason why a lot of you don't know about Tai Chi. You know, it's deliberately not promoted. I'll tell you about that, why this ancient secret is kept from you, but I also will share with you some ancient secrets. The most intriguing part is this chi energy. You know, QI. Who the heck decided to put a Q in front of that chi word? So now that we're so familiar with energy science and energy medicine, when I talk about energy and chi, you sort of get it. You know, when I talked about that 15, 20 years ago, you just think, ooh, that woo stuff. Ooh, that woo stuff, okay? So, so essentially, that Tai Chi, the Chi energy, is something that you're familiar with. It's a life force, it's intrinsic energy. You heard it as a Kundalini, the Prana, and, and so forth. So we talked about the, all the doctors earlier, that if you cut your finger and, it's, and the wound starts to heal, the blood coagulates, it, what, what happened? That's that Chi energy, that, that that force that wants to be alive, that wants to thrive. And so what's happening is that most of us just sort of sequestered, you know, let it go to sleep, it's got a little lazy. And so, so when we talk about this chi energy, I'm talking about awakening in you, it's, it's in you. And the thing is, it shouldn't surprise you, when you don't move, it doesn't move. <laughs> you know, when you're lazy, it's lazy, you got lazy chi. So what, what the, uh, the, the secret that I want to share with you is that for years, they didn't really want to promote it. They just, the masters did not want to share with the Western world, you see. They took our, our, our country, they took our wealth, they took our resources, they took our lives. We're not sharing with them. No way. And so, so this energy that I'm talking about, what, what is so fascinating about this energy too, well, I'm talking about 2,000 years ago when you didn't have all these cool measuring devices, you know, hospitals, doctors, and holistic, he was helping you. They just resorted to this intrinsic energy to stay alive, and, and longevity was just based on that. Now, all this stuff is just observed from nature. You know, you don't have these EKG machines and, and, and you know, equipment. You just observe, you know, oh, this guy ate this, killed over and died. Don't eat that. <laughs> you know, this crane is able to stand on one leg and gave the other one a break. Maybe I'll do that too. Oh, that's pretty good too. So, so all this, these are movements we, that we borrowed from the animal kingdom. And so over the centuries, over the years, we took good notes in there. So what would you say, what would you value this, this incredible, um, uh, information from. I mean, if it could save your life, keep you healthy or keep you longer, what would you pay me for? A lot, right? Those of you who are in a sick bed, the millionaires, they will pay everything for it. So get this, with this energy that's coming up that was just so fascinating, they pretty much relegated to only three groups that were privy to this information. 
the wealthiest, the most powerful, and then there's also the, the, the Shaolin priests and monks. When you know, you're in the monastery, you have nothing better to do. All you do is just look into this, this energy part. So of the three groups there, think about that. They just kept this information pretty much to themselves, and they handed it down through the, the dynasty, but to sons only, ladies. I'm sorry. To their male descendants. So my father is a Tai Chi master. Guess where I got that information from? Do you know why? My father had five daughters. <laughs> But for the longest time, I'm like you. It's boring stuff. You know, he tried to teach, but you know, oh, it's for old people. It's too slow. You know, I do my aerobics, <laughs> jogging, marathon run, everything. You name it, bridge to bridge, bay breaker. I ran it. And then one year, my knees gave out. I just had lower back pain, you know. I, then the old man's there, never sick a day in his life, didn't wear glasses, had no problems with his knees. This guy knows something I didn't know. So I said, Dad, would you teach me Tai Chi? Okay. So that's how, how I, I got to know it. But the beautiful thing about this legacy that I have inherited from my father, he was also an ambassador, and we were in Washington, D.C., trying to promote world peace, you know, across the, 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 the table. And he says, I cannot in good conscience talk about world peace when I've got the secret to health, to being calm and to be just whole, whole like this, you know, and I'm talking to the people. So he decided to share. How about that? So in Washington, D.C., he started to teach some of those brown eyes this, this exercise. <laughs> and then he got imported and we and ended up in, in California. So, so I started to, to teach with him because my mom says, your dad is losing a lot of students and it breaks his heart. He's retired, all he cares about is Tai Chi. So I just went and saw what was going on with him. Wow, he was teaching Tai Chi this way. He will have you stand like this with your eyes closed in a saddle position, close your eyes for 45 minutes. <laughs> I said, Dad, you cannot teach the people here that stuff that your, your, your Sifu master taught you. I said, if you do that, when you open your eyes, they'll all be gone. <laughs> he opened his eyes and they were gone. So your mom, my mom says, you know, your dad's retired now. The tai Chi is, he means well. Although, can you just assist him? So I assisted my dad for about 13 years. And he passed away about, about three years ago. And he's, and by the way, I'm, I'm a Tai Chi instructor. I'm a wellness educator. But my main profession is an art director. You like the art? So. So we'll talk about that transition later. But, but the legacy that he gave me just weighed heavily in, on my heart, you see. So I said, okay, when he, he passed away, he said, you need to keep up this legacy. And his philosophy is world peace through world health. He says, when they feel better, they're more cooperative, they're more friendly. You know, when you don't feel good, you're not a very nice person to be around. <laughs> Me too. So I said, wow, that's really, that makes sense. So I picked up this legacy, and I continue to, to teach it. I was just teaching two or three classes. You know, I have like 14 classes now. Where did they all come from? But my most favorite class is the one I designed called Tai Chi for Women. And I'm bringing that message here to you today because the top reason that I was teaching Tai Chi was because everybody had balance issues. You know, they were falling or something like that. I said, ladies, this is a real issue. And I say that to all my students. Because if you see the osteoporosis, the little, the, 
bone picture, you knew how you looked like. First you have bones and then you have holes, you know. Then you get osteopenia, there are more holes than there are bones, you know. Then you have osteoporosis, my goodness, where are the bones? They're all holes, you see. You know, you heard that grandma fell and broke her bones. And so now they're telling us grandma's bones broke and then she fell. You, you have hollow, hollow bones, you know, so that even if you do bam like this, it breaks, you see. So I said to my students, the last thing you want to do is to fall. I don't want you to fall. The, the aging is, is something that happens. We can't stop aging. We can stop premature aging, but you can't stop aging. That being the case, I want the women to learn to look and walk the Tai Chi way. And I'll tell you why, I'll show you in a second how, how it is. Um, the other thing I want to share, the reason that I have classes for Tai Chi just for women, is because there are things I want to say to women that I can't say in my co-ed classes. I said, I said, ladies, you are the most giving creatures on earth, bar none. You give and give and give. And even if you don't want to give, you are built that way. You're built to make babies. Month after month, every 30 days, the best, the best in you gets collected to make that baby. You know, the blood, the minerals, and everything goes there. And at the, at the end of maybe 30 days, when the baby is not happening, you know, whoosh. <laughs> I look at that toilet. Remember when you just got your period? I look at it and go, oh my God, I'm dying. Okay, but listen. Every month, you give your all to make that baby. Month after month after month, for how many years? You just count them, how many years to, to menopause? All those years that you have, why are you so surprised that you are not a candidate for osteoporosis, osteopenia, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So instead of saying, oh, you're the weaker sex, oh, you know, you just made frail, no. It's because we have been giving. And all the doctors who had came up here to say, it is time that you give to yourself. So with the Tai Chi energy that I'm, I'm harnessing here, as if this information is way too important to be kept in the martial arts studio. I want to take the martial arts, take Tai Chi out of the martial arts and put it right where it belongs. Tai Chi was never just for martial arts. It came before martial arts. Tai Chi is this yin yang, force in life. By the way, the word Tai Chi itself, so that you don't think it's just for Asian, okay? <laughs> I'll give you the, the actual meaning. Tai means the supreme, the highest. And Ji means the optimum. Those two words is asking only one thing of you, that could you please reach for the highest that you could be and also find out the optimum, be the all that you could be, okay? So I said that I wasn't going to talk too much, but I want to have you actually feel the chi. Knowing that's the case, keeping this mind about Thai, meaning the highest that you could be, optimum the most you could be, I'm going to show you, teach you at least, at least three things to take home with you. The Tai Chi breathing, the breath, the Tai Chi balance, and the Tai Chi walk, okay? By the time we finish this part, and you go to your, your break, I'm going to have all of you be doing the Tai Chi walk, okay? All right. So the Tai Chi breathing, as a matter of fact, I'd like to have you stand up to do that. And get the wrinkles out, get the wrinkles out, okay? I also call it stuck energy, oh, stuck energy. So those of you who have, to have done uh, yoga or, or singing before, it's all about the breathing part. Now I'm going to be very specific with the Tai Chi breath. I want you to tuck your tongue at the roof of your mouth, okay? If you have it there, just gently resting. Now I want you to pinch your nose and try to breathe in. If you can't breathe in, you're doing it correctly, <laughs> okay? When you have your, your, your tongue touched at the roof of your mouth, it closes the throat passage, forcing you to be breathing through your nose. Why? Well, did the doctor tell you that this is the most incredible machine that in the whole world you designed? You've got nose hairs in there. That's your first line of defense to filter out stuff that has no business going into you. 
you breathe through your mouth, you just pass by your first line of defense, didn't you? And we don't want to be mouth breathers anyway. So, so, so that's the case. Now I want you to breathe in, but I want you to breathe in through your nose. And here is your assignment. I want you to breathe in 100% and not what you usually do. Be honest, you just take about 60% and then you exhale. Yes, you do. Okay, on top of that, you breathe too fast. Too fast, too shallow. That's what all of you are guilty of. That's the case, meaning every breath you take, you just cheated yourself out of 30 to 40% oxygen, didn't you? Anybody care to have a little bit more oxygen for their body? Say yes. Okay, inhale, and when you inhale, I want the hands to go up. But breathe through your nose. Inhale, maximize the size of those lungs as much as possible, and when they're full, the palms go down, and you exhale. Completely. Empty out those lungs. You have more room now. Inhale. And exhale. Now my student says, oh, that's so slow. I said, no, that's so normal. <laughs> Everything you are doing is too fast, too shallow, okay? So that's something that you want to do. You want to do a Tai Chi breathing outside. Now we're gonna talk about Tai Chi balance. Stand here with your feet shoulder wide, as wide and parallel. Why? Because that's in alignment with earth. I'll tell you where the chi comes from. It comes from Mother Earth and also you. You are chi making machines. When we move, like the current in the ocean, like the wind, you draw chi from Mother Earth into you. So right now, be so aware of your balance. I'm 50-50, and I'm gonna to start to have you shift, and when you shift, you are creating chi, you are drawing chi, but you are also learning balance. Shift your way to the left, and shift your way to the right. Whoa, that feels good. Shift your way to the left again, and to the right. Why does it feel good? Chi is being created. Now stay in the center, okay? Chi is being created, in, and, and all of you, all of you have chi awakening you that just needs for it to happen. Plus, you're moving the legs, the synovial fluids, it doesn't come out when you don't move. So that's one good thing. These are things you should be doing all, and you're aware, I have 80% of weight on here, 20%, now I have 80% on the other one. What does it look like, 100%? Don't do this if you want to. This looks like 100%. Whoa, okay. By the way, that, whoa, honor that, honor that. I don't want to hear like, oh, I'm so clumsy. No, it's important, you know what to do. Now, the last thing I want to teach you is a Tai Chi walk. Bottoms of your feet have meridian points. That's why you go to the reflexologist, don't you? You didn't know that this design is fantastic. You want to stimulate the bottoms of your feet where the meridian points are because the meridian points Go and, and massage your internal organs. A complete Tai Chi step, I'm gonna do it sideways, but you're gonna forward, especially when you go out there. The heel comes down first, just like Dr. Hagashi said, and then you lean forward until the toe feels it. That is called one complete step. If it's not complete, it's not complete. Then the next thing happens, the other foot also comes, the heel comes down first, roll it forward to the toe feels it. Heel down first, roll it forward to the toe, feels it, okay? That is called a Tai Chi complete step. What you're doing now is you're stimulating the internal organs, you also drawing Chi, you are learning balance, and you are also getting muscle. When you do this, this is the ancient Chinese secret I'm having you. When you go there at the supermarket and you're pushing your char cart, and you're doing this Tai Chi walk. Whoa! That's your secret. You're energized, you're massaging internal organs, you're just getting healthier. And with that, I thank you, namaste.